Marsha Rose and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. You guys, I am sitting in this chair so you know I will be talking your ears off. But before I get into this conversation, I would like for you guys to please like and subscribe to my channel, please. And thank you. And as always, tell a friend to tell a friend, share with a friend, because it might be some information they may need. But anyways, what I will be talking about in this video is dating after heartbreak. Yes, y'all. The hardest thing is for me, I don't know about anybody else, but for me is dating after heartbreak. The dating sites, the meeting up with people, the not being sketchy if somebody's trying to play you or will something last or whatever it may be, you know, the the concerns of dating. So I have a little, I have some bullet points here. So the trials of dating in 2023. First and foremost, who told me to be single at 37 in 2023? Like everything is just overly exposed. There's so much stuff on social media. It's like toxicity is running the world. Everything is toxic. You got the Krishan and Blueface. Is that it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't be paying attention to that. But the Krishan and Blueface, everybody breaking up. Nobody wanting to stay together because they have so many different op. They think they have so many different options. So they're out there just doing whatever it is that they want to do. And I've been struggling, y'all. Like, I've been single for, I say, about a year and some months now. And so far, it has been hard. Like, when I started, when I started... When I uh, left my ex, I did not go straight into dating. I had to heal all the different hurts and pains, the things that I thought were real but weren't. You know, I had to face reality and take the rose-colored glasses off of what I assumed that the relationship was. And that was like the hardest part for me because I honestly felt like this was my end all be all. And to be honest, it was a freaking facade. It was like, I seen this, I did so much, but yet it was never enough. And the first thing I have to say is that if when you're in a relationship and you find yourself doing all that you can do to make it work and it still does not work, that means that relationship is not you. So it's not for you. So that was something that I had to face. That yes, the relationship was not for you. After eight years, almost eight years, I finally was like, you know what? No matter what I'm doing, this relationship was not for me so that I had to face it was a lot of therapy I wasn't therapy before I got it out of relationship but I did still continue therapy after I got out of relationship because I needed therapy to help me through all the struggles that I had it was a struggle of feeling alone it was a struggle of no longer seeing your life with a person that you thought that you were going to be with for ever you know so it was a hard thing to swallow so when i got out of that relationship all i wanted to do was try to just heal i didn't want to i didn't want to be with anybody else yet because i knew that i still had feelings there and if i was to bring another person into the equation i'll be crying about my ex still I would be getting angry about certain things that did not involve them. And I would just like bleed on that other person, which is not okay for me because what I know that I'm looking for in this time, in this time of my life is for a forever person. And if I'm looking for a forever person, but still crying about the last person, that's not healthy. So I had to clear all of that out of my brain, all of that off of my, off of my body and and just say no 
I'm, yes, I may want to be in a relationship, but yes, I know that I'm not ready for a relationship. So that was something that I had to come to terms with. And so for all the the rest of 2020, 22, I did not date at all. I cried a lot. I prayed a lot. I was numb a lot. A lot of things came out. It was just last year was very much so a hard year, but it also was a healing year and it also showed me a lot of things. And yes, 2023, I finally was like, you know what? I feel like I'm ready to date. So earlier this year, I, you know, I, I met someone, I met actually two people. The first person that I met, oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you that I'm actually open to dating men. So I opened the door to start dating men again. Yeah, it's been 17 years. <laughs> so I'm like, what am I to do with a man? <laughs> but I want to figure it out because, you know, I think a man would do good for me as well as a woman. So anyways, but anyways, let me get into this. So I have met a guy i actually met him at this club that i usually go to this lounge that i usually go to all the time i seen him you know he was kind of attractive and he just seemed like he was a sweet heart he was just a sweet person because when he was just like somebody that was he actually worked in the club and he was like a, the hookah guy and he was like he just looked like he was just like a really nice person so i was like you know what let me go and talk to this man. So I went over to him at the end of the club, at the end of the um at the end of the night, and I said, Hi, what's up? You kind of cute. Um, what's your name? And he told me his name, and he was like, I'm also single. I was like, You single? That's good, because I'm single too. What's your number? And so he gave me his phone, and I put my number in his phone, and I called myself. I, I think he texted me from his phone to let me know that it was him. And, you know, I was like, okay, you know, this ain't so bad. He seemed pretty chill. He seemed pretty cool. So I'm going to do what it do. So that was on a Friday night. And since, like, we were talking the whole weekend, he wanted me to come to the club on that saturday i was like no nah, i don't really go out to the club like two times a week i mean even two times a, a weekend i don't really go to the club two times a weekend but have fun do what you do and it is what it is so then um ugh. so now sunday come i'm still talking to him talking about his night how he had fun da, 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 whatever so, you know, the vibe is still vibing. And then he says to me, oh, tonight is open mic night. You should come out. I was like, I don't really want to go out because, like I said, I don't really go out like that. So, you know, I don't really know. But he was like, he was like, no, no, come, come, come. Just come. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just come since you want to see me. You know, I'll just come and I kind of want to see you too. So I'm going to come. So I got there and when I got there, first of all, I didn't know there was a cover and I feel like if there's a cover and you wanted me to go so bad, you should be paying for me to get in there. So I'm standing at the, I'm standing at the desk where they're taking the, the um, payments and he's literally standing there just staring at me while I pay. And I, that was a that was a red flag because I'm like, how are you just staring at me pay when I didn't even want to come here in the first place? You should be paying for me. Am I right or am I wrong? Please tell me under the comment section if you think that I'm right or wrong because I, I want to know. So he's just standing there. I pay. And then I go over to him, you know, hug me. He's all happy to hug me and, you know, whatever. So I'm like, I'm still kind of like, mm, I don't know, because you literally watched me pay and I didn't want to come, and you know, I didn't want to come here in the first place. So that was kind of unattractive for me. But one thing I'm going to do as an independent woman is pay for myself and do what I have to do for myself. <laughs> so that, that it didn't even matter to me 
but it also it made me put up my freaking antennas and feel like no you probably ain't the one so then um for the whole night i'm in my own zone like he's doing his thing because he works there and i'm in my own zone because i could be in my own zone and have a good time so i'm just in my own zone i'm i'm back and forth with him because you know I'm going to hang out with him because he wanted to see me and I kind of wanted to see him. So I'm going to hang out with him. So we ended up um, at the end of the night. I was like, okay, I'm about to leave. And he walked me out to my car and then I left. And then like later on in the night after I got, got home, I texted him and said, I'm home. And he was like, you are mad cool. Like we should do this more often. I was like, are you asking me out on a date? He was like, yeah. I was like, well, I'm free tomorrow. So what's up? And he was like, okay, we could go to da 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 da. So it's called Boxcar. It's like an arcade. So I was like, okay, cool. What time should I meet you? He's like, four or five should be fine. I was like, all right, cool. See you then. Talk to you later. Have a good night and be safe. Bye. So on that Monday, I'm sitting there. I didn't get no phone call from him, no text from him, nothing. You know, this monk uh, texts me at four. Talk about some, oh, so I guess it's five o'clock then. I said, what? I said, you didn't hit me up all day. I didn't know that we were still on. He was like, if I didn't hit you up, you should know that we're still on. I'm like, how am I supposed to know? Like one thing I don't play about is communication. I need communication. I need to know what I'm doing. So I had ended up picking up hours to make some money for work because who's sitting around waiting for nobody? <laughs> not I, Marshallee, <laughs> not I. So I end up, um, so I'm end up like, oh no, like make that, make it eight o'clock because right now I'm working and I don't get out until seven. And so let's do, let's shoot for eight o'clock. He was like, damn, how I get from four to eight? I said, because you ain't hit me up. That's why I went from four to eight. And that's when I'm free now. So yeah, so I got cute. <laughs> Our outfit was cute. And I went and I met him at the like adult, uh, at Boxcar. So when I got there, uh, I walked in, he didn't even say, I don't even know if he said that I look cute, but that's beyond the point because I knew I look cute. So it doesn't matter if he said it or not. I know I looked good and we had, we honestly had a good time. We were talking. I feel like I was leading the conversation more and he was just talking. He didn't really ask me much about myself. So that was another red flag that I was, I was, I had when it came to that situation. And I was just like, what, what the hell? <laughs> like, and, and I literally throughout that time that I was, that I was talking to him, I said, do you not, you don't want to know anything about myself? Are you going to ask me anything about myself? And he just like laughed it off. And then we just continued to talk about him. And so that, that, that was kind of annoying to me. So for some of the things that he was saying was, I was like, do you want to deal with that? Or do you not want to deal with it? It was a, he, he had a lot of shit going on. And I was just like, I don't know. I'm like, the communication sucks. What the stuff that he's involved in is not really structured. I don't know if I want to do this, but I am having fun right now with him. So it comes to that we're there for like hours. I don't think we left until like 12 o'clock that night. And he ended up, and so I'm like, okay. So he's like walking me to the car. And I'm like, oh, where's your car? I don't have one. I said, how did you get here? And he was like, I took a cab. I'm like, okay. I try not to be judgmental because, 
everybody's going through what they're going through. But then again, I don't have to deal with what you're going through. So that's what I've learned through my healing journey. <laughs> but anyways, so I was like, okay, I'll give you a ride. Why did I say I'll give you a ride? Because for one, I don't know this man. This man could kidnap me. He could sexually assault me. He could whatever. But I felt safe. So I ended up, you know, bringing him home. So we get to where he lives and we're sitting in the car and he's talking. I'm tired right now. And I'm not, and on top of that, I am over this because all the, you know, like I said, the communication was just sucky. So I'm just like, I don't know if this is really for me. So then he ends up finally leaving and getting out of the car. We hug, I leave, I go home, tell him, have a good night and whatever. I still am, like I said, I still like, mm, I don't know. So then the next day comes, we're, we're texting, but it's not as frequently because I'm no longer I'm no longer um, forcing the conversation. I'm not, I'm no longer putting my whole energy in it like I was before. I'm no longer carrying the conversation. I'm trying to give him the floor to ask me questions or, you know, make me, let me feel like you have some interest. So I'm just, so it wasn't as, the conversation wasn't as, flowing like it was before so I was like whatever so later on that night I was like oh you should call me and then we have a conversation so once again we're talking and I'm I am I am basically carrying the conversation and it just and then it's, when I stop talking it literally goes silent and then I'm like okay you know what let me just say something and then I just say something. And I think the phone disconnected and I just didn't call him back. And I didn't talk to him again after that. I didn't text him. I didn't call him. I was just so, I was just so turned off that I just was like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. So do I see him here or there when I go to the lounge? I've seen him a few times. He's on my Facebook, so he says little things to me sometimes. And I had to tell him the other day, I said, he said, you're my future bae to me. And I said, I'm not because we don't view relationships the same. He doesn't believe in marriage because I guess some shit that he has gone through. So he doesn't believe in marriage. And I believe in marriage and I want to get married. So I had to tell him that you know, we see relationships differently and that's okay. So this is never going to work. So I think that was the last thing that I actually said to him. And then we went off, it went off from that. <sighs> so that was my first dating experience going back into the field. The second one was a female and I met her on Bumble. So I was on Bumble I would, I'm usually on the best friend part of Bumble because I would be wanting to get some friends. And I'm kind of still, little, I was still a little terrified of being in a relationship at that time. But, you know, I was like, let me switch it today and see if I find somebody. So I was, I was swiping, swiping, swiping. And then I swipe. I don't know if it's right or left when you match. I swipe one of those with her. And, and I think I said something to her and then I just left it alone because I was like, it is what it is. If they answer, they answer. If they don't, they don't. So I, after a while, after like 24 hours and the person doesn't answer it, it, unmat it just stops. You can't match with them anymore unless they pay a fee to talk to you. So she ended up paying the fee to talk to me again and our conversation was flowing like she was it was it was back and forth she was she's so beautiful so I'm loving the conversation as well as her face looking at her face so it's going it's going pretty good and then 
I don't know if I asked her out or she asked me out, one or the other, but we were like, you let let's go on a date. So she sent me. So I was like, I'm off on Tuesday. If you want to come and hang out with me, we can go on a date on Tuesday. And it's Taco Tuesday. Let's do tacos. So she was like, I know a place that has good tacos so we can meet up there. So when I got, so the day I have the video, you guys seen the video of me getting ready for our day. I bought her flowers. I got cute. I met her at the restaurant. And when I got there, I was a little late. I, <laughs> I was like five, 10 minutes late. You know, because I was trying to get myself together. <laughs> so I was a little late. And when I seen her, I was like, oh, my God, she is so pretty. <laughs> she is so beautiful. And I gave her the flowers. And we went into the restaurant. In the restaurant, we were talking. A lot of stuff that we were talking about was her traumas. Like, I would just ask her about herself, and she was, like, telling me about the different things about her and what she's went through, she's gone through, and she was still married, y'all. She was still married to her ex-wife, so that was something that, but they were separated, and they were going through a divorce, so I wasn't really sweating it like that because, you know, it is what it is. And she, um, so we were just talking about that stuff. A lot of the conversation was me asking her stuff. I just feel like sometimes I, with these, with these people that I talk to, I'm carrying the conversations. So, and she was really shy. She was actually trembling. <laughs> like when I hugged her, she was trembling and it was so funny. It was so cute because I'm very much okay. Like... I'm like, what, how do you say it? Like, I'm very, I'm not shy. I'm out there. So I'm not going to hold back anything. So then she, her and I, she walked me to my car and we were just sitting by my car talking. So we're just talking. I'm just looking at her face and I'm just like, and I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, and she's just staring at me, like dazed at me. I said, you want to kiss me, huh? <laughs> I was like, I was like, they kissed me. And she, she said she was so shy, she didn't want to kiss me. So I literally grabbed her and I kissed her. And when I kissed her, she don't got no lips, y'all. She ain't got no lips. So when I kissed her, I was like, <laughs> I was like, am I really kissing you or not? It just felt... It felt weird, but <laughs> like I said, I'm just dating. It is what it is, and I liked her, and I liked her vibe, and she was beautiful, so I wasn't sweating that. So, <laughs> oh, child. So then <laughs> I was, it's so funny because when I kissed her that time, and, and I draw it away from her, from kissing her. I had just stopped talking. I was like, what's wrong? Why it felt like you didn't kiss me back? And she was like, she was like, oh my God, I'm so shy. And, and I, I really want to kiss you, but I'm so shy. So I don't even, I was like, okay. Like me, I don't really like shy people because I'm aggressive and I would like somebody that's aggressive as well. So it was just, to me, it was just... <laughs> It was funny and cute at the same time. At that time, it was cute. It was cute at that time. So then she ended up, I ended up driving her to her car. And when I was uh, in my car, I said, can I have a kiss goodnight? So she gave me another kiss. And I looked at her, I was like, oh, you don't got no lips. You got white people lips. That's why it was like, it felt like that. And, she, and we were started cracking up. And she was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. So it's not, it's not me. It's your lips. <laughs> it was funny. I swear, I don't have a filter nowadays. Like, my filter is gone. Like, I say whatever it is that I want to say, however I feel. And it's it be hilarious sometimes. 
But anyway, so she left <laughs> and I left and, you know, we hit each other up, let us let each other know that when we got home. So we were talking back and forth, going on dates back and forth, having a good, we were having a good time. But a lot of, but I started to realize that she had a lot of baggage that I didn't want to deal with that she needed to settle. And then when I would say stuff to her, like, you have a lot of stuff going on. Don't you think you should, you know, try to go to therapy? She's like, I don't want to go to therapy. I, I don't want to, I don't want to rehash those things that I've gone through again with another person. So I don't want to go to therapy. So it was kind of, that was kind of unattractive to me because I feel like when you're going through these things, I don't want to be the one to pick up your baggage. If I'm the one that's always, you know, picking up your baggage and 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 you're just putting all of that stuff on me and my shoulders and I'm not putting nothing on you, that, well, not not putting it, but make, and I'm feeling like I can't put anything on you because I have to be the one carrying your load. I don't want to deal with that. So it, she had a lot going on. Like, I'm not going to tell her business, but it was a lot going on. But I still wanted to try because I really liked her. But then it started to get, there was something that happened uh, right before my, my friend passed away. My best friend Chevelle came to visit me. And when she came to, when your friend comes to visit you, you ain't going to be on the phone all the time talking to, talking to shorty. Like you entertaining your friend, right? Right, right or wrong? Because I felt like I was wrong. So um, throughout the day, she's texting. We're not texting as often because I'm entertaining my friend. So we're texting here or there. Whenever I have time, I text her. First of all, we're just dating. You're not my, my, my woman. So we're just dating. So she wanted so much for me, from me that I, was, I wasn't able to give to her because I was with my best friend. And... Uh, so me and my best friend hang out. We go to the mall. We, we go to out to eat after we go out to eat. I actually call her now. So when I'm talking to her, she seems kind of off, but I'm like, what's the reason she, she does like the passive aggressive. Oh, you just now talking and calling me and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I was with my best friend. Like, is there an issue? Is there a problem? She doesn't say anything. You know, she doesn't make it seem like it's an issue. So now I was like, all right, I'm about to go chill with my best friend. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So my best friend leaves the next day and I end up calling her uh, later on when she's on break and she's mad. And I'm like, what are you, what's going on? What's the issue? She starts to go off on me, like. You didn't call me. You weren't really talking to me like that. And I just felt like you were neglecting me. You were breadcrumbing me. You weren't giving me what you usually give to me and stuff. Like I said, you knew that my best friend was here, right? And I was with my best friend and I was hanging out with my best friend, right? I was like, so why? And then I was like, so why do you feel like I needed to be on the phone answering you all the time? Like that to me is, I can't. I, I couldn't do that. So I was trying to reassure, re, to give her some reassurance. But then I also realized that it's not my issue. This is your insecurities that you have from past situations that you're putting on me. Like I'm trying to give you a sense of comfort because I'm that type of person. But then again, I'm just like, that's not really my responsibility, you know, because you're going to think however you want to think. So me telling you whatever I want to tell you, it's not really going to make a difference because you're going to create your own narrative. I literally asked her what you thought me and my best friend was fucking like, what, is that the issue? Is that why you're upset? And she was, she, she hesitated, so hesitated, but she said no. And I'm like, I hope not because I'm not. <laughs> and, and basically at the end of the conversation, it was it was done, but I still felt a certain type of way about it. So her and I, um, after that, we stopped. We weren't as get, we weren't as close anymore because of that reason. And then 
when my friend passed away and I told her like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And I ended up cutting it off and we just stopped talking after that. And like I said, like she just was mad at me and it's okay for her to be mad at me, but I hope she use, she used this to go do what she needed to do for herself. But yeah, that's what's been going on when it comes to me dating after my heartbreak. It's hard out here. Even now, I'm still swiping on um, Bumble, trying to see if I can see for myself on um, what's out there for me. And the conversation will go good with these people. But then after a while, it just becomes exhausting because it's the same repetitive thing over and over and over and over again. But I do still feel like my person is out there. I'm still keeping up the faith. And I know that I have to do what I have to do to get to that place. I have to get my ass out the house because I'm usually in the house, not doing nothing. So now I know in order to find what I need to find for myself, I got to get up out this house. I got to have conversations with people. And... I'm going to do it because it has to be done. Like, God's not going to help me. I have to put in work as well. God going to help, but I also have to put in work. But, like I said, everything is everything. And it's going to be all right because my person is out there. And all who are going through that struggle of dating in 2023 within the world of social media, I'm with you. Okay, I'm with you. It's hard out here for us, but we got to keep the faith and know that our person is out there and trust that while we're healing, they're also healing. But all who stayed with me for this video, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And Marsha Rose is out of here. Bye.